one question that I actually hear more than I heard in the past because so many people are thinking about moving to a new state, not just a new city, but a whole new state is, is Vancouver, Washington a fun place to live? Is there anything to do in Vancouver? Is it boring? What's it like there? Well, in this video, I wanna dive into that topic because it's something that I care about too. Wherever I look at, when I go somewhere, whether it's on vacation or to check out if it's a place I might wanna live, I ask myself and I ask my wife, do you think it would be fun to live here? Do you think we'll have a good time? Is there something for us to do? It's like a small town, but does it have something to do that will keep us entertained? So after work, we have something to look forward to. Well, that is what I'm gonna to talk to you in this video where we answer the key question. Is Vancouver, Washington a fun place to live? I love this topic. So you know what? Gets me excited. Gets you excited. So what does that mean? It's time for you to sit down. Buckle up, get ready. Here we go. Hey everybody, it's your host here, Dave Baker, with the Living in Washington team from GotNorthwest.com. Now, of course I love the whole Northwest, but today we are going to specifically be talking about, you know it, one of my favorite places, Vancouver, Washington, where I was literally just telling my wife yesterday as I was watching this video about things to do there and things I've already seen, I was thinking, what? Well, look, it's all the stuff I like to do. I love it. I do love Vancouver. There's something about it, something about the energy, the vibe, it's an expression I like to use, that really drives me there. Now, before I get into the video and we talk all about it, first thing I want you to do is tap that little subscribe button and click that little notification bell. That way you'll be notified every time I put out a new video all about living in Vancouver, living in Portland, and just living in the Northwest in general. Because a lot of people have been asking me more about different parts of the Northwest, even though we are focused on Vancouver, Washington, and Portland, Oregon. Okay, now if you're already thinking about moving out to Vancouver, you're ready to move to the Couve, you know what to do, right? Do you not know? Let me tell you, you get in touch with me. Send me an email, send me a text message, give me a call on the phone, okay? The team cannot wait to help you. Weekends, nights, reach out to us. We also have a link in the description below with the calendar, if that's easier, but I know a lot of you just love to send me an email and that's great. Send me your details about what you're looking for, what you're thinking about, your time frame, and all that stuff. And the team will help you get the ball rolling. Everybody's excited about the Northwest in general, excited about Vancouver and, and Portland too. You know, but we're going to talk about Vancouver in this video. Okay, so are you ready? Let's go over the reasons why I think that Vancouver, Washington is a fun place to live. All right, are you ready to go through a list together? Let's talk about the first one. Number one, the amazing outdoor environment. The, the number of things that you can do outdoors in Washington in general, in Oregon in general, and specifically even in the Vancouver area, it's limitless. You have so many options. You have the Columbia River right there. If you haven't ever actually seen the Columbia River, obviously we're gonna have a picture here in the video, but what I want you to do is also watch my videos where I come from the Vancouver waterfront and you can see how beautiful it is. There are so many things you can do on the river in general, right? Like if you enjoy boating, of course you can do that, taking out a personal watercraft like a jet ski or a ski do that's available. There's fishing, there's hiking on the riverfront area. There are a lot of great places where you can just go along the river, right? And not just in Vancouver, obviously in the attached cities as well. When you're in Camas, maybe you get lunch in the downtown in Camas, Washington, go down to the river. Or the new Washougal waterfront. By the way, if you are thinking about getting a place by the Washougal waterfront, even a commercial space, reach out to us because our team is very interested in helping you. The Washougal waterfront has a lot of great stuff. When you're driving along Highway 14, you keep seeing the river over and over again. And then if you look on your map, you'll see there's all these outdoorsy things you can do down there. What's really cool in some of the towns, you can actually kind of walk under a little bridge and come right out on the river. There are river walks, things of that nature. Now, let's not just limit ourselves to the river. You have the lakes, lots of lakes, Lackamas Lake, Vancouver Lake, the other surrounding lakes. Okay, there are a lot of lakes. So if you enjoy fishing or swimming in a lake, when you go to these lakes, I like to hike around the lake, but when you go, you see like 
people swinging from trees and doing all this fun stuff in the water. Some people are just floating, they're just having lunch. There's just all these different things you can do. So the outdoors is probably always gonna come up on any list where you're talking about the Northwest in general. Again, that's gonna be you know, Oregon and Washington, just so you know. And Idaho too, Idaho has a lot of outdoor stuff. But I do think that the Oregon and Washington side of the Northwest has the most greenery. And if you appreciate stuff like that, then that is absolutely wonderful. Okay, let's talk about item number two on the list. This is going to be the surrounding towns and things you can do. Let's follow up on this outdoors uh, track a little bit further, okay? If you like to go skiing, you have Mount Hood on the Oregon side of the Columbia River. So you can enjoy all of these things even if you live on the Vancouver side. You can also enjoy things like going to the beach along the Willamette River down in Lake Oswego or in the Selwood neighborhood of Portland. You have multiple beaches that you can access. I don't think a lot of people knew that. And I did not know that before I came to the Northwest. I did not realize there were so many beaches along a river. In fact, if you ever have an opportunity, I love driving along the river down the Oregon side past Lake Oswego and continuing. There are so many little beaches and little brown signs that show you like, the brown signs show you like uh, natural reserves and things like that. There's so many state parks that you can visit along Highway 84. It's absolutely incredible. If you're driving on the Washington side, driving towards Stevenson, Washington, there's so many things to see. There's actually some lodges, like the Skamania Lodge. There's a great place you can stay, you can relax, you can enjoy that outdoor environment while also sleeping overnight indoors, okay? Now, if you do love camping, I know people love camping, hiking, bouldering, rock climbing, and all that type of stuff. There's just an incredible amount of camping opportunity. I know some of you want to make a joke uh, when I say camping when we talk about Portland, but uh, let's focus on enjoying the outdoors in a natural different type of environment okay so additionally i don't want you to forget you have hood river to the east and i actually was reading that hood river is rated as one of the best small towns in america they've got food they've got breweries they've got windsurfing and kite surfing and all that kind of stuff going on there because of the canyon when you're in hood river you see all that stuff and the drive is actually really nice through the columbia gorge to the west what do we have we have cannon beach newport you have Manzanita, you have Seaside, Lincoln City, you have all these things along the Oregon coast that you can benefit from. On the Washington side, you have the peninsula when you go on the 14 all the way to the ocean. On one side of the water, you have Astoria, Oregon. On the other side, you'll be heading towards uh, Long Beach and those parts of Washington. It's really incredible. I've been out there many times. I really like it. It's so fun during the summer just to see the scenes, go to the beaches, try the food, just do different things. Speaking of which, let's move into the next item on the list. That's going to be the food and coffee scene. When I first came to the Northwest, I had only heard about Portland's incredible food scene. Because when you look at the rankings of the most foodie friendly cities in America, you often see New York City, San Francisco, and then Portland. Now, if you want to count all of North America, to be fair, we have to put Montreal was ranked as like the third best foodie city on many surveys I've read. These numbers rotate, but it's all opinions, but it's just interesting. Portland has an incredible food scene. You're right there, okay? You can drive over into Portland if you want to. They have the food cart scene, very unique. You get a lot of variety of different types of foods. And you have all those streets like Alberta and Hawthorne and Belmont, and all these different neighborhoods you can enjoy and try all their food scene. And there's a lot of cultures represented in the food scene. It is, you know, it's like, it, it, it's, it's shocking. Okay, it's really delicious though. Now on the Vancouver side, what do you have? You have a lot, okay? So what I was trying to say before I got so excited by all the restaurants was that when I first came to the Northwest, I had only heard about Portland's food scene. I didn't really understand much about Vancouver, but now there are so many new restaurants there. It's, it's, it's amazing, seriously. Good job, Vancouver. And I don't just mean along the Vancouver waterfront, but I do think you should check out the waterfront if you haven't been there. They have some more upscale restaurants like a Dos Alas and things of that nature. But you also have the regular downtown on Main Street, on Columbia, and all the way up to the part they call Uptown. You have tons of places to try, from Thai food to additional breweries, local restaurants, local fare, just things you can try. You really have an unlimited number of choices there. It's, it's pretty shocking. I really love it. And on top of that, if you are a co coffee person or if you're like a cafe person, you want to go type on your laptop, you know, you're thinking, wow, I really, I need to send Dave an email right away about moving to Vancouver, moving to Portland. Well, hey, you know where you can do that? In a coffee shop in Vancouver, because Vancouver has quite a budding coffee scene. 
Seriously, I'm surprised. I'm surprised. They have a booming coffee scene there. It, it wasn't expected. I've seen a lot of coffee shops and friendly environments where you can hang out there. See, some coffee shops are not the same. Some coffee shops are kind of like a walk-in and then just get your coffee and let's walk out or hot chocolate or whatever extreme drink you want, the half-calf, double decaf with a twist of lemon, whatever you want, okay? That's from a movie. If you know what movie that's from, drop a comment below. I'm not taking credit for that. That's a classic Steve Martin uh, statement. Make sure you drop your comments. I want to know if you know where the movie that came from. And when you're watching the video, hey, drop some comments and let me know what you think about what I'm saying too. Okay, there are a lot of places now where you can hang out. So you have coffee places and then boba places for people who like drinking the milk teas. You have that scene popping up too. And that's not just downtown. Sure, downtown's cool because you can just park or if you live by there in like the Huff neighborhood or other neighborhoods, you can just walk around. But you can just park, go to a coffee shop, go get dinner, hang out at the waterfront, get one of those uh, frozen ice cream cones. Uh, it's not ice cream, it's uh, something freeze that you can get down, walk on the river. I can't remember all of a sudden. I do love them though. But you can really enjoy that. You can take your time and you can enjoy that. That is not something that you could do uh, many years ago. So it's really grown. The food scene in Vancouver itself has really grown. I've noticed you also see some bars with trailers next to them where they're serving food. And it's not shoddy food, okay? It's pretty good. I, I recently, I had a few different things uh, when I was walking down there. I saw these like pop-up food carts. You have Isan Thai, which is like really well known in, in this region. Uh, the, I, they have great pad thai, in my opinion. Um, you have a lot of different foods though. A lot of places I think you should try. And don't just go to the fancy places, okay? Go to the local little tiny places. Even though some of the fancy restaurants are local, okay, the upscale ones, I think it's important to try the small business owner's local food that he, he or she might have brought in from like their grandmother's traditions or something like that. Just something to try and enjoy. I think that it's really, it's really unique that we have so many options in both Portland and Vancouver on the food scene. It is, it is quite incredible. Let's talk about the next item on the list, which is going to be art and culture. Yes, there is stuff for that. There are art and cultural locations in Vancouver, Washington. It's not just on the Oregon side, seriously. So what do you have? You have quite a few things. You have the museum actually that is just outside of downtown. I believe it's on Maine or on Columbia. Uh, I can't recall exactly, but I'll see if I can find a link and put it in the description where you have a great museum you can visit and you can learn about the history if you are interested in that. Those of you with children might want to take your kids there. There are many historical sites that you can visit in the area. The biggest one is probably Fort Vancouver. I mean, it's massive, right? You can drive through it, it's so big. So that's again, another historical place. You do have some military history and other things you could see there to learn about the discovery of Vancouver. Who is Vancouver, by the way? Why is it called Vancouver? Do you know? I'm gonna give you a second to leave a comment before I give the answer. But it's an explorer who came and discovered multiple cities and that's where the name Vancouver comes from. There's another city named Vancouver. I, do, you, do you know where it is? It's in like, it's like north. It's, I think it's in another country. It, it's real, we don't, we're not talking about that city. We're talking about Vancouver, Washington. Okay, not that other Vancouver. Some guy went up there too, something like that. Now, did Vancouver himself specifically come to Vancouver, Washington? That's an interesting question, isn't it? Something you might want to look up. Okay, but the key thing is you do have historical things. You have performance houses like playhouses. You have music venues. Okay, you have, there's a concert venue uh, if you go to a battleground, Washington, and, or is it in Ridgefield? It's right there, battleground Ridgefield. Sorry, when you're driving up the five, it's there, it's gonna be on the left-hand side, but you have multiple concert venues, you have multiple uh, music venues, you have multiple places where you can see plays and musicals, like indoor performing arts centers and things of that nature. When you're walking through the city, you'll see signs up about local events. There are a lot of great websites you can check out about local events too, going on. And there is a lot to do. It's, it's family friendly, it's fun. And if you are into that scene, there's definitely stuff to check out. It, it's not limited. I, I know that sometimes I say that Vancouver is a smaller town, but I don't say it's a small town. It's not a tiny town. It's a smaller town, but it has, it has a great small town vibe. I love the feeling of community in Vancouver. It's different than Portland. Portland is much bigger. Okay, Portland is, it, it's big, okay? Vancouver, although it's geographically big, I feel a different sense of connection with the people there when I'm, you know, when I'm walking around. And 
I think that's something that people think about when you're trying to decide if you should live in Portland or in Vancouver. You've got different issues like how the taxes are done, state income tax versus sales tax. You have different factors that can apply to you. But something to consider when you're thinking about where to live is what is the feeling in the community? What does it feel like? What are the people like? Is Which side of the river is right for me? It's something to think about. So that was the next item on our list. Now, lastly, I want to bring up one more item on the list, and that's going to be local events. Okay, there are a lot of local events. First of all, when it's not cold outside, and it's a beautiful day, with the sun out, you do have the farmer's markets. You have the downtown farmer's market, of course, right there, uh, it's next, kind of close to Esther Short Park, right outside of the, it's not by the waterfront. Remember, it's, it's a little more in the downtown area. And don't mix up the exact waterfront itself with the downtown proper itself, because that, that is, you know, that's a walk. That's a, like a 10 minute walk or five minute walk. It's not adjacent yet. It might be soon. But when you go from Esther Short Park, you've got the uh, Vancouver farmer's market. You have a lot of other things. There are events at breweries that I notice, quite a few actually, because of the nice brewery scene down in Vancouver. Additionally, you have all of your community events, you have fairs and festivals. It's, it's, not a, it's not a super slow pace of life if you're looking for something to do. But on the other hand, it is relaxing. I'm going to talk about that in, in one second. But keep in mind, you can check your weekly magazines or your uh, weekly papers if you like to grab those. People still do read those. But of course, you can also check the website. There's a lot of events on the schedule in the city. The city itself uh, publishes some of the event schedules. There are some tourism sites that will show you some stuff. And I am considering integrating that stuff onto our website for those of you who are thinking of coming up. Let me know in the comments if you think that would be helpful for you just to know more about the city. Would you like to see the events going on in the city? Now, before I wrap up this video, I want to discuss the item I just mentioned. You can have a relaxed pace of life and a relaxed feeling even in a place that actually gives you something to do. Now, I also spend time in a smaller town to relax, but I feel that that city does not have a lot to do. It's far away from Vancouver. It's in the Northwest, but it's definitely a small town. There's not a lot to do. Do I feel relaxed there? Yes. But perhaps, I would rather spend most of my time in the Vancouver and Portland areas because I can still be relaxed because the environment with all the greenery and the general vibe and energy is quite relaxing. But there's still events going on and so many things to do all the time. I just had a really deep thought with that. That, that, that like really just hit me while making this video. That's, that's a thing right there. Okay, if you, some people told me well, I want to get out of California. It's, there's so much hustle and bustle and other stuff going on. It's too busy. There's traffic everywhere. And then I think, well, you could move to a small town. I know you've mentioned that, but I mean, you're coming from a place that has like all you can eat sushi at 50 locations. And now you want to go live in a small town. That, that's too much. But is there a place where you can have a lot of fun, have a lot of food, entertainment, dining options, family events, cultural things to do, but still have a relaxed feeling? Well, yeah, there is. I, this is very, this, this is like, it's like, it's, it's like getting me right now. It's very interesting. That's, that is a good way to describe what I like. That, that's what I like. I want to be able to do things. I want to be able to go out. I tell my wife, what if we want to go out? You know, when we're in a small town, it's like, well, let's just sit at home and bake bread. And that's fine. You know, that's relaxing. It's good. It's good to relax. It's okay. But I don't want to be like that 100% of the time. I like to have options and opportunities to go out and have some fun. Vancouver, Washington is also adjacent, not adjacent, a river away from Portland, Oregon. Whether you love Portland or not, whether you never want to visit there, at least it's there. At least you can go to the food scene, the coffee shops, the events, the music venue, the Moda Center has constantly got concerts going on. You've got that other venue over there, uh, something in the clouds, I believe, right next to Moda. You have all these things you can do, but you can still feel relaxed. Well, this, well, this video is great for... Uh, I don't know why I'm, the sun is just getting me. I haven't seen the sun for a minute. So this video, well, I hope it was great for you because it was great for me. It, I just had this really good realization of trying to express what I, what I love in certain cities and why I want to live there. Even if I can only live right next to it and I can't afford to live in it or whatever the, the situation is, 
it's, it just opens a lot of opportunity. Okay, everybody. Now, before we end this video, I want to remind you, if you want to move out to, to Oregon, to Washington, or Idaho, yeah, I know some of you watching this want to move to Idaho. That's okay. Get in touch with me. Send me an email. Send me a text message. Give me a call on the phone, okay? 24-7. If I'm awake, I'm going to answer the phone. Otherwise, leave a message. And if you want to send an email, it's even easier because then we can make a plan to help you get the ball rolling. And before you watch my next video, which is going to appear somewhere over here, make sure that you smash that little subscribe button and smash that little bell. And then give us a thumbs up. And then you'll be notified every time I put out a new video all about living in the incredible Northwest. All right, everybody. Can't wait to see you. Make sure to watch that next video. Take care.